This screencast shows different ways to model and simulate heat exchangers in Aspen Plus software. The problem statement is as follows. Compare the simulation of a heat exchanger that uses water to cool a hydrocarbon mixture using three methods. One, two heaters connected with the heat stream. Two, a shortcut heat X. And three, a detailed heat X. The hydrocarbon stream to be cooled enters at 200 degrees Celsius, 4 bar, and 10,000 kilograms per hour. The mass fraction is 50% benzene, 20% styrene, 20% ethyl benzene, and 10% water. The valid phases for the system are vapor liquid liquid. The cooling water stream enters at 20 degrees Celsius, 10 bar, and 60,000 kilograms per hour. To begin, open Aspen Plus and click on New, then click on User and General with Metric Units. This will save us a little time because the problem is specified in metric units. We will first set up the simulation before inputting data. Click on the Simulation button on the left menu. Under Exchangers, click on the Heat X drop-down menu. We will select the heat exchanger shown for both our shortcut and detailed heat exchanger simulation. Left-click in the white area to place the heat exchanger, and right-click or, or press Escape to stop placing the heat exchanger. Double-click on the generic B number to rename it. Rename the bottom heat exchanger D Heat X for our detailed heat exchanger and the top heat exchanger S Heat X for our shortcut heat exchanger. You can drag the name to a different location if it's in the way. Next, click on the Heater drop-down menu on the bottom and select the heater shown. Place two of them in the simulation, naming the top one Heater 1 and the bottom one Heater 2. Now, click on the Manipulators tab on the bottom menu and select DUPL for Duplicator. This will allow the same stream to enter enter multiple heat exchangers and effectively run multiple simulations at once. Place one duplicator on the left side of the screen and one on the right. Name the left one H-carbon for the entering hydrocarbons and the right one water for cooling water. Next, we will draw our material streams. Click Material and select the input hour on the H-carbon duplicator. Rename the stream Hot. Create streams from the output of the duplicator to the input of the two heat exchangers in the heater. Make sure to know which input is the hot end and which is the cold. Reposition the streams if necessary. Rename them H in 1, 2, or 3 for each heat exchanger. Now draw the exiting hot streams from each heat exchanger, naming them H out 1, 2, or 3 for each exchanger. To make things more convenient, right-click on the water duplicator, select Rotate Icon, then Flip Horizontal. Draw an input stream, naming it Cold. Then draw streams originating at the duplicator output and going into Eat Exchanger. Name them C in 1, 2, or 3. Again, reposition as necessary. Draw outlet streams from each exchanger and label them C out 1, 2, or 3. Lastly, we must represent the transfer of heat between the two sides of the heater. Click on the drop down menu of material, then select Heat. Draw an hour from heater 2 to heater 1. Rename the stream Q for heat. We are done drawing the simulation. To proceed, click the green next arrow. We now have to enter our components. Type in benzene, styrene, EB for ethyl benzene, and water. On the left hand menu tree, click on Setup. Here we can specify the valid stages, which are given in the problem statement as vapor liquid liquid. Click the green next arrow to specify which method Aspen should use for calculations. We will choose the non random two liquids, red liquid quag method. This is abbreviated as NRTLRK in Aspen. Pressing the green hour again brings us to a summary table. Clicking the green hour once more prompts us to run the property analysis. Click OK. After the analysis is complete, click the green hour again, press Go to Simulation Environment, and press the green hour once more to begin specifying information about the heat exchangers. The first stream we are brought to is the cold material input. From the problem statement, we know the cooling water is entering at 20 degrees Celsius and 10 bar. Specify the flow rate as 60,000 kg per hour, and that all 60,000 kg per hour are water.
Click the green arrow to proceed to entering the hydrocarbon stream. The stream enters at 200 degrees Celsius in 4 bar with a flow rate of 10,000 kilograms per hour. We can input the mass fractions on the right as 0.5 benzene, 0.2 styrene, 0.2 ethylbenzene, and 0.1 water. Note how Aspen adds some mass fractions and displays the total at the bottom. This way, you can ensure the sum is equal to 1. Clicking the next arrow brings us to the deheat x setup. We first have to select the calculation method as detailed. Next, select the hot fluid to be in the shell. We will keep the flow as counter current. Select rating from the type menu. From here we can specify that we want the exiting hot stream vapor fraction to be equal to 0. Click the next arrow again to specify the geometry of the heat exchanger. On the shell page, we will specify the diameter as 1 meter. We next proceed to the tubes page, where we can enter 300 bare tubes, 3 meters long, with a 31 millimeter pitch, an inner diameter of 21 millimeters, and an outer diameter of 25 millimeters. Note how specifying the inner and outer diameters of the tubes automatically calculates the wall thickness. On the baffles tab, we can enter 5 baffles with a 15% cut. Lastly, click on the nozzles tab and specify all nozzles as 100 mm or 0.1 meters. This is the last piece of information we need to enter for our detailed heat exchanger. Clicking the green next arrow brings us to the shortcut heat exchanger setup. The only thing we need to do here is to change the type to design and specify the exiting hot stream vapor fraction as zero. The shortcut method uses its own algorithm to design the geometry of the heat exchanger. The next arrow now goes to the first heater, which we chose to have the cold fluid flowing through it. The problem states that there is no pressure drop across the heater, so we can specify that information here. Next, we need to enter some information on the second heater. We will specify the pressure drop as zero and the vapor fraction as zero. At this point, we are told we are ready to run the simulation, but we first have to change a few things so that the simulation works correctly on the first try. The NRTL-RK method is valid for hydrocarbons, but not so much for the water flowing through the system. As such, we want to specify the steam table method for all the cooling water processes. By clicking Block Options under Deheat X in the menu tree, we can change the cold side property method to Steam TA. We want to do the same thing for the SHEAT X and Heater 2. Lastly, we want to go to our water duplicator block under the menu tree and change the property method to the steam tables. Now, after clicking the green next arrow, we are shown that a solution converged and that the simulation is complete. To view the results, click on Thermal Results under Deheat X in the menu tree. We see that for our detailed heat exchanger, the outlet temperature was calculated as 120 degrees Celsius. By clicking on the Exchanger Details tab, we can view information regarding the geometry of the exchanger. We see that the required area is just over 50 square meters, and that we designed for just over 70 square meters. This 39% over design is important because it allows us to increase our capacity if necessary in the future. If we look at the shortcut heat exchanger results, we see the same outlet temperature of 120 degrees Celsius. If we look at the exchanger details, we see that a more aggressive design was used because only 20 meters squared is required for heat exchange. Lastly, looking at our heater results, we see that 1.68 gigacalories per hour of heat is transferred into the cold side of the heater, while 1.68 gigacalories per hour of heat is lost by the hot side of the heater.